I'm doing this uh, as a follow-up to part one of the Bill of Carbon Fiber Guitar. Unfortunately, I lost all the footage from the second part, so I'm trying to piece together the best I can. There seems to be a lot of interest in how to finish this off, so I'll try to give the best details that I can come up with, but really required uh, pretty much taking apart a completed guitar and uh, starting from there. So I'm going to refer to this really as a carbon fiber part two destruction. Here's the one of the carbon fiber guitars apart. Actually had a very nice top on it, but uh, there was a crack in the laminate, so it really wasn't acceptable to sell or use it. But let's weigh it first together. It weighs 2.2 pounds or one kilo without any hardware. Very, very light, very, very strong and very stiff. Before I could cut it apart, I needed to see the seam where the top met the bottom. <clears throat> that involved a lot of sanding to go through, which you see are some areas of through the epoxy and the resin. Uh, wanted to take off the fretboard first. This was epoxyed on and it's really stuck solid. Here I'm pounding with quite a bit of force to separate this actually. The wood breaks in several places. Um, just cracks off at the uh, where the frets uh, were placed. After that, I used the sander to clean off the wood off the carbon fiber. The best I can, just clean it off with some naphtha so you can see the details a little bit better. At this point, it's time for the Dremel snowstorm. I found this was the only way to separate this. I really had to just cut it. So I tried to stay close to the glue line and separate it. I wasn't going to to try to put this back together again, so I really wasn't that careful, but it uh, did separate eventually. Here I'm working with the headstock, separating that, all the way down the neck. Now the two parts have been separated. They certainly don't look that pretty inside and beat up, but... Uh, they took a lot of abuse. It took about an hour just to separate the guitar. The epoxy really held. <clears throat> I used a West system with uh, beads to thicken it up. You can see how flexible at least the one piece is, the half is. These are three layers of carbon fiber. Uh, and it's less than... <clears throat> Point 0.1 thickness, actually it's 0.08 thickness. This shows some of the areas of purfling. I broke this loose just to demo how they just fit against the inside of the guitar. And they're epoxied in place. This took quite a bit of effort to just rip this loose. This is a 3D printed uh, opening for the control cavity. Uh, it's painted black here. It's actually it was gray. Uh, this allows uh, a plate to be placed over that and close in the controls. Here's the wooden block. To s develop the wooden block, I put a template uh, on where I really want my pickups and my tailpiece bridge. You can use essentially what you want, but that'll determine how much wood reinforcement you really want within the guitar itself. I really wasn't worried. This is just pine, so it's extremely light and strong enough, certainly, to hold the screws. And all. The uh, trial here is to make sure everything's intact. You only get one shot at cutting this, and uh, you really don't want to make a mess of it. Make sure you sand the epoxy. I usually use about a 120 grit just so it holds. You'd really need that for a mechanical bond here. 
I'm laying it all out just to keep little marks out. I use tape around the edges, use a lot of the gel epoxy, and glue all these areas in place. Uh, I found that actually it's easier to glue them in place and then mark the areas than route them out afterwards. Purfling, this is really important. I make my own <coughs> out of carbon fiber. I use uh, aluminum uh, channel and really wax this and then saturate the carbon fiber and lay it over it and uh, keep squeegeeing it down to confirm to the carbon fiber. I usually go with about an inch and a half wide and whatever size is convenient and then let these dry solid and uh, you'll find they make these strips. Just trim them to about a half an inch by a half an inch or maybe even a little longer. Uh, this is really what holds your top and the whole piece together front and back. For this guitar I used about 50 inches. This area, the uh, purfling I'm cutting, cut out V's in this. Um, these notches allow the carbon fiber to bend. Don't cut through the one side, leave that intact and straight. The V's allow inside curves to be conformed. I wouldn't cut this until I mark it out as I'm moving around the guitar and slowly cut either a notch or a straight line. The <coughs> straight lines here allow inside curves. And uh, the notches uh, conform to outside curves. This part's a little long so it doesn't really fit very well. Uh, it can be seen uh, better in uh, the completed uh, areas. But uh, it will conform. You can epoxy this, hold it in place with uh, clothespins. Just make sure you cover the part uh, with um, wax paper. That way the epoxy won't stick to your clothespins. Otherwise, you're going to have a real hard time getting those out. But uh, it uh, does fit and forms your platform to attach your top is extremely important. Here you can see it's the piece is placed in the mold. This is the <coughs> purfling in place. Uh, also, be sure you sand all this purfling uh, so that you get a good contact with the epoxy. This is the notched areas, um, and they come together quite well. Uh, here it's harder to see, but in the uh, upper right corner, uh, there's an inside curve, and there's where I use the straights. Uh, the point here is to lay this so that it's absolutely flat with the inside of your mold, uh, because uh, when you put the molds together, you're going to want that uh, to fit. The m other important part is the neck reinforcement. For this, the same way I make my own pieces, I use a piece of aluminum, uh, three quarters of an inch wide, uh, three eighths of an inch thick, and uh, mine is 18 inches long. That seems to fit my necks quite well. It can be long, longer than trivet to size. I put it over a flat piece of three inch aluminum, super glue the whole thing together, and then wax like crazy. Let the wax dry, apply about three coats. Same thing, you just put the carbon fiber over this. Make sure it's saturated. For the neck, uh, if you're using this type of carbon fiber, I'd probably use three or four thicknesses. I have uh, a piece of very thick uh, carbon fiber, so I only use one for that, but it's a much thicker weave. But it will give you the necessary strength. You want it to be about... Uh, Two millimeters thick and it forms essentially a red beam that uh, when you put the top piece on and that's glued in place 
this thing will not move. This is why it's really important when you're making your mold. This area has to be dead flat. There can't be any wave in it, uh, twist. Otherwise, you're never going to get it fixed. It's going to be there forever. This is very unforgiving. So just a drawing just showing you how it fits in place. It's just a, put a lot of the uh, thickened epoxy in there so that there's good squeeze out all around. You can wipe that off or make sure all the areas are coated. For the top part of it, I use a wood block that fits in. I've sanded through in some areas just to show you the best I can. The wood block just uh, provides a good anchor point for the tuners and the screws. Here I've got the part clamped in a vise trying to move it. It's just not going anywhere. Now when you're putting all this together, you essentially put your two halves into the place after these parts are glued together. Your wood pieces are epoxied into place. Put that together. Wax your molds. I can't stress that enough. Otherwise, they're never going to come apart. Trim them to the point where they're flush with the mold ends. Uh, if you're going to have any overlap at the ends, make sure you sand it as thin as possible. And then just um, glue them together. I hope that's been helpful. Uh, if any other questions, please leave comments.